What is up friends, welcome back for a new series, this time with Ozark. I am super excited to get into this one because ever since it first released a couple years ago, I've been hearing nothing but great things about it and I believe as far as I know it's still running and so eventually, hopefully I get to catch up with all of you and then check it out whenever the next season arrives if I finish before then. But I know that there's three seasons out right now and I've seen some people compare it to Breaking Bad in style. I don't know what that means, but I assume I will find out eventually. I am a big fan of Jason Bateman, who I know is the star of this, and I believe I've only seen him in one serious role before. I could be mistaken. I may have seen him in some other stuff, but it was The Gift in 2015, I think it was, but I loved him in that. I'm definitely more used to him in more comedic roles, but after seeing his performance in that movie I definitely think he can give a fantastic performance in this more serious series and besides knowing that he stars in this I don't really know any of the other cast members or the plot what the show is about I mentioned that I've heard people say that it's good but I haven't really heard people talk about the details of the show and what direction it goes so I'm excited to find that out but hopefully you guys enjoy watching along with me for this series I'm excited to get into it and so without further ado let's jump into see Season 1, Episode 1. Money. That which separates the haves from the have-nots. But what is money? It's everything if you don't have it, right? Love the cinematography already. Some great shots. You see, the hard reality is how much money we accumulate in life is not a function of who's president, or the economy, or bubbles bursting, or bad breaks, or bosses. It's about the American work ethic. Some great opening dialogue narration right here. And I like the little subtle things that they've been showing to give us an idea of the character. Patience, frugality, sacrifice. When you boil it down, what do those three things have in common? Those are choices. <laughs> Dang, dude has a lot of cash right there. Holy crap. No wonder he's smuggling that around at night. Money is, at its essence, that measure of a man's choices. Well, you know, we're really just getting started looking at uh, interviewing. Man, that was a great opening. I love it. Setting the tone early. We just want to be comfortable with who we trust our money to. Mm-hmm. Well, tell me, um... <laughs> He's already disobeying the order. Dude's multitasking right now. Fools are tricky. It's very difficult to uh, recoup your money when it comes time to sell. All right, we gotta be in the city at four. Yep, I'll leave in 10. <laughs> Awkward timing right there. I don't know if that guy caught a glimpse of what he's watching. I like the lighting in here though, very moody. 5,000 would still open an account here today. We'd be happy to take check or credit card. Mm. Check. Great. Nice to meet you too, Marty. I'll see you in the car. Yep. <laughs> oh, geez, man. I'm getting the vibe that these two guys don't get along very well, just from the looks of Marty. What kind of windows are these? The kind you see through. I mean, this is southern facing, right? I mean, depending on their performance rating, the cooling bill will be 15, 20% higher in the summer. Something to consider. This guy is very attentive to the little details. Always got money on his mind, it seems like, based off the first scene and this. Saw your computer screen. Wendy catches you rubbing one out to that amateur backdoor action. She's gonna crap a toaster dude what are you thinking you and wendy been together how long 20 years 22. well i guess that answers the question from before he did see what he was looking at they seem to have very different personalities but i guess somehow their friendship works look if he's just gonna stand around why make him go because it's a high school dance everybody stands around. you just don't want me there you know maybe you should go because then you can wear your minecraft t-shirt and take your spear <laughs> hey man minecraft is the best don't hate on my guy for that give me the clicker please what? i was watching that no you're not yes i was give it to me and eat your dinner and leave your brother alone. Why do you always take his side? I mean, it's not like you ever say anything to I'm him. I'm not taking his side. Oh gosh, man. If this is the first family interaction we're getting, they definitely are not the best or in the ideal situation, it seems. Marty seems pretty unhappy. Your consumer reports came today. It's ironic. Thank you for dinner. I worked hard at it. Seems like she's the only one working hard at stuff right now in their relationship. Their interactions felt very wooden, at least from Marty's side right there. Love that shot too. Him alone at the table now, everyone else left. Obviously this is the first episode. I don't know how the filmmaking is, but based off the quality so far, I feel like there definitely could be some good metaphorical stuff going into some of the shots. You want the History Channel? Mm-hmm. 
Thank you. I'm watching something else. Oh my gosh, dude. I can't believe he's I'm doing tired. Oh, wait, that's his wife. Oh, shoot. No wonder he's interested in watching that. Who the heck sent him that then? Is he mostly quiet? Just got something on my mind. Do you care if I go to bed? Mm -mm. Good night. Good night. Yikes, man. So I guess that might explain some of his demeanor when he's talking to her. I don't know if it's been that way for a while, but I definitely don't think that's him in the video. Oh, nice cut right there. I didn't expect that at all. Is this a first time deal for him or has he been doing this for a minute as well? You haven't done this before, have you? Let me guess, your wife won't do what you want her to do. Seems like he's a pretty closed book with everybody he comes into contact with, barely has any response. Even though you pay pot and full state taxes and live in a top rated public school district who's never missed a mortgage payment. <laughs> she seems like she has his whole life story figured out. Based off what I've seen, it sounds like she's got it down. Hey, you can't be beaten off in your car, baby. It's a workplace. Yeah, thank you. Oh, wait, what the heck, man? <laughs> I didn't realize until just then. I thought the other girl was just hiding, but I guess he really was just by himself. That was a great way to do that. I did not think it was just in his imagination. I need you, Marty. Now. Now? No. Bruce, it's the middle of the night. Why don't you tell me what the problem is and I can try to... Dell. Dell's here. Okay. Who's Dell? He sounds pretty serious over the phone, though, so it's either a boss or maybe like a big client or something. Hey, Dell. Didn't know you were coming in town. Where's my five million dollars? Your five million dollars? What's he talking about? Have a seat. Oh my gosh, dude. What the heck? Five million? There's no way Marty has that on hand. Whatever money you're missing, I'm sure there's a no. perfectly good mm -hmm. explanation. Stolen. We are not stealing from you. Marty Bird can make a hundred million and dirty money disappear like spit on a hot skillet. What the heck? I have no idea what's going on. Has Marty not been telling everybody the whole story? Is that what we saw in the first scene? My father's closing up and he sees Aunt Carlotta slip five dollars worth of pay out of the two into a pocket he could not believe it why carlotta these guys look so afraid of him and i would be too he seems pretty intimidating so she needed the money to buy medicine so her boy could breathe cried like a baby swore she would never do it again love this camera work right here man this guy's a good actor too i like his delivery mr hudson what should my father do five dollars you tell her if it happens again she's gone you put her on Probation. Is he asking that because that's what he wants to do with Marty here as punishment? Marty, what should my father do? I know what this is. I know what you're doing. This is an intimidation audit. I mean, you think you can just come in here unannounced and rattle some cages and someone's going to admit to skimming? Oh, shoot. Marty's about to clap back. This is the most he's talked all episode. We've been laundering money for Mr. Navarro for 10 years. The only thing you've done here is you've involved a civilian. To be honest, this uh, Dale Carnegie, Pablo Escobar ruse, I think that that's beneath you. Bro, that just told me they've been doing this for 10 years, so apparently this isn't out of the norm. Hey, 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 but my dad had nothing to do with this. It was Bruce's idea. Hey. Oh gosh, bro, this just got so bad. I guess Bruce isn't going to be a major character after this. Please, my dad had nothing to do with this. Yikes, bro. We're just a bit into the first episode and we've already got a threat of execution. You know what I dislike about Chicago? All the Mexicans. Might as well put up a sign that says, Welcome to Chicago, drug hub of the U.S. Bro, this is not what I was expecting after he interacted with those first two clients. I thought he was just a normal advisor. I made a terrible mistake. I can make this right. I swear to God, I can make it right. Father shouldn't have to see his child die. Oh my God. Gosh, this is brutal. This is getting straight to the point, the intense stuff. Obviously, Marty's not going to die. This is the first episode, but I don't know what's going to happen to Bruce. We read the gas gauges. They read full when there are five gallons light. How much, Bruce? Eight million over three years. 
Oh, he is a dead man for sure. There's no chance he lives after stealing eight million. This is all me. I need you to understand. I would have never done any of this. I thought it would hurt you. And I am... Oh my, this is a wild premiere episode, my gosh. I believe him though, when he says Marty wasn't involved. Your kid's summer break. I don't want to go Wendy in front of the kids. Wendy doesn't know anything about what I do. I never told her about anything that I do, not once. What a mess, dude. His whole family's gonna pay and he didn't even do anything besides just being involved in the business. More shoreline than the whole coast of California. Excuse me. This place right here has more shoreline than the whole coast of California. <laughs> He's starting into the same speech. That's a good move. He hasn't been killed yet. Got this brochure last week, scouting businesses, and I brought it back to talk to Bruce about it. And I was going to talk to you about it because I want to do what we do down there. You're right about Chicago. Oh man, this is a pretty smart play right here. Just my work. Is he going to offer to make all his money back by going there? It's away from every single law enforcement agency in the U.S. and it's cash rich. I mean, like, what do I do? I launder 10% of what the cartel does in the U.S.? Bro, is that real? 10% of what the cartel does, he helps launder? That's insane. He is in so deep. What did these guys take from you? Was it eight? I'll get you that. I'll put that together. I'll make you whole. You call it earnest money. But then I take me and my family and we go down to the Ozarks. Oh, this is great, man. So that's where the title comes into play. It looks like this guy's buying the plan. You have 48 hours to get me my money. Okay. Cash. After I have my money, you have another 48 to be on the road to the Ozarks. This man is a quick thinker. I can't believe he's escaping with his life. Such a short window though, 48 hours for 5 million. We have to call the police. I want you to forget it, okay? I, but, or do you want to just role play it? You're the wife of the top money launderer for the second largest drug cartel in Mexico. Go. Man, he's just spilling all of it. This is so much to handle. Even me as the audience member, I can't believe what I'm hearing. Now here's what I'm gonna do. Over the next two days, I'm gonna try to pull together eight million dollars to pay back what Bruce stole. What, what we're do, not do, gonna do, do, do. Oh, that's right. It's eight million that he has to get, not five million. That was his original prediction. This is spiraling out of control. Believe me, I I I get how hard this is. We are making this move as a family. We would prefer if you would see it as an adventure. Yeah, well, thanks for the eggs and sandwich not surprised that she's upset moving as a teenager i don't know what age she is probably high school definitely a hard thing everything liquidated cash seven million nine hundred and forty five thousand four hundred dollars sir again we don't keep that kind of money on site that's pretty dang close man just like 55 grand off can he get it in 48 hours though this firm has been dissolved i'm sorry the firm it no longer exists uh, but, um, you were great all the way through. Dang, bro just drops it on her like that. No sympathy at all. Well, wait a second, wait. Are, are we talking about run for your life kind of leaving or a witness protection situation? Everything's on the table. This is the guy that she's been seeing. I assume at least the one from the video from this shot. I don't necessarily see what she's seeing compared to Jason Bateman or Marty. I don't know if that's a bad move though for her to tell him where they're going. The less people that know the better, I'm sure. He sees your wife at least twice a week. Either his place or somewhere closer to yours. This Sugarwood right here, what is that? Sugarwood's her pet name for it. Dang, well, he knows all the details now. She can't hide it for long. I'm a little bit worried for her now because I don't feel like Marty's somebody to mess with. Scale of one to 10, how difficult would it be for someone to disappear? New ID, social security numbers, credit cards, you could do it. For a while, anyway. Is he just asking that as a formality as part of this whole process, or is he wanting to get away from the cartel? I just got a text from my bank. My wife emptied our checkings and savings. You got a gun? No. What? Good. Silverberg lives in the Aqua Tower, apartment 8003. Oh no, dude. So she's just trying to run off without him. That's such a bad move. We're not gonna have another execution already, are we? Wendy, leave me a message. Wendy, what are you doing? You're not only gonna screw Marty, but you're gonna get yourself killed as well. The cartel's gonna find you easy. I didn't expect him to find her that fast. I was just saying that in the thought that she gets away. 
this. Holy crap, bro. I did not expect that. What a shot right there. That was brilliant. Please tell me Wendy doesn't come falling down soon after. This man just walks away, even though he knows his wife is probably up there, but I mean, he doesn't want to get caught by the cartel as well, so I guess he's cutting his losses, maybe. You lied to me, Marty. She knows about our business. What kind of man isn't willing to lie to save his wife's life? Oh, what a mess. Dude, if every episode is like this, this show is going to be freaking stressful. Live with the cheating, or I take care of our Wendy problem. Your call. What should my father do? Your father? How about Aunt Carlota? You never answered my question. <laughs> oh, we're going back to this, my gosh. At this point, I don't know what's going to happen. I feel like anybody can die. What did my mother make him do? Fire her. Why? It's not the first time she stole from you. It's the first time you caught her. Oh my, he is giving authorization to kill Wendy right now. Brutal. I love the layered dialogue right there. Genius. Bro, how is she still alive? I thought she was dead for sure. The only reason I could think of that he kept her alive is just as more of a scare tactic. The threat's out there, so Wendy probably won't make a mistake again. Or maybe it's just because he answered his question honestly compared to everybody else. Now, I want you to take my 7,973,000 with you to Missouri and clean it. But it's clean. It's hard to clean. I'm not super up to date with my cartel terms. Does clean it just make it like untraceable or something just spread it around so they can't find it i'm thinking this whole ozark thing is complete straw grasping bullshit. but i'm willing to roll the dice but if i think that you're trying to f me i'm gonna have to kill you we know that he's going to do it he's good to his word when it comes to killing people that sucks man i think maybe he was wanting to get out after he paid his debts and that's what he was talking about before with disappearing you said where's my five million dollars and bruce and the handsome kid took eight i didn't know they stole a damn thing and you killed liz on a hunch on a tail i've been working with you and bruce for how long <laughs> This man is insane. The audacity to do that and be right. It's a great way of setting up a villain character right there. Because that means in the future, there's no chance Marty can mess around with him. Lodell was our end. You heard him. He would have been a fantastic government witness. Mexicans. Mafia. We all want to believe that these people are more than they are. Oh, fascinating. Liddell sounds like a last name. That wasn't Bruce's name, was it? So they're definitely going to still be keeping track of Marty. Liddell was no different. Entertaining though. Why would we do all this if Bruce was just entertaining? Where is Martin Bird? <laughs> Dude, he has so much on his plate, my gosh. He has to keep the cartel happy as the biggest launderer for him, and he has to avoid the FBI. This is episode one, and I'm already so stressed out for him. So because of the stickers on the back, I know that's the van from the beginning. I just don't know when the money dumping was going on. I mean, I would assume that it's after this just because it looked like he was taking it out of the suitcase that he just put it in earlier. Oh, and he finally shows some emotion. I can't blame him. This is so much to handle. Wow, man, that is beautiful. Is this the Ozarks right here? This is not a bad place to be, that's for sure.
What a shot, man. <laughs> that is gorgeous. I assume the Ozarks is a real place, not just a name of something made up for the show. After seeing this, I want to go visit it. Wait, Jason Bateman directed the episode as well? What a talent right there. He did a great job because that was a fantastic premiere episode. Does he direct more episodes or was it just this one? I had no idea he was involved with the production as well. Because, I mean, alone, his acting is great. So he's not just balancing a lot as the character of Marty. He's balancing a lot as Jason Bateman. Well, I'm definitely hooked off that first episode. I love the premise and all the different moving pieces. I'm surprised how much death and destruction there was in that episode, especially after that first execution scene. Everybody was dying. I don't know if that's going to be a theme for the series, if characters are going to die off pretty quickly. Obviously, in hindsight, once I get further along, they wouldn't have been necessarily main characters since they died so quick, but at the time, I thought they were setting up some of the major players. But Dell certainly is an intimidating antagonist. I love the way they set up his character, so I'm very excited to get to the next episode here. Well, I'm not sure I'm prepared for several seasons of this kind of stress and intensity, but I love this first episode, and I'm really excited to see Jason Bateman for an extended period of time in a more serious role. Obviously, he's been in less serious roles in TV shows like Arrested Development, but this is definitely a whole new beast, but I loved his performance in this first episode, and especially considering that he evolved so quickly because he started off as such an unassuming, kind of quiet, normal guy, but then by the end of the episode, you realize that he can definitely handle himself in a lot of situations and he's got a lot more dark work going on in his life working with the cartel and clearly he's been doing it for a while if he's been kind of at the top of the money laundering business and I'm excited to see his character continue to develop as well as the others I like the family dynamic I feel like it's very layered and interesting so far obviously I'm sure that will develop a lot more as we go through the seasons but I think they did a good job at setting up all the characters in this first one and I commented on it several times during the episode but I like the overall look and mood of the series I don't know if that same look is going to continue throughout it but the kind of gloominess and the really blue look to it I think it adds a lot to the atmosphere and just accentuating the intense feel of already stressful scenes and so I'm excited to hop into the next episode with you all hopefully Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching along with me for this premiere episode and so I will see you all for episode 2 next time and until then, peace.